today we are talking cam timing and degreeing your cam gears. This is not a beginner thing to do. This is an advanced thing and this is only just setting it to what the cam manufacturer recommends. This isn't for performance tuning in a cam. That is a whole nother beast and has to be done on a dyno with people who really know what they're doing and you have to really trust your tuner because you can easily fuck this up. So, I'll run you through what we've got set up here. So, on the crank, we have a, a cam timing degree wheel. Um, these can be had for about $50. We then have a, a pin that is showing our top dead center mark. Now, we use a piston stop, which half of it is inside the um, spark plug hole at the moment, then you would thread this inside, you would sit the degree wheel at what you believe to be 10 degrees, then you would tighten this down just so it touches on the top of the piston, you would then turn the motor over, the piston will go back down, then it will come back up and it will hit on this. Then you read what it says there, then you have to figure out where actual zero is, once you're happy and you've got actual zero and you've tested it a few times and you're getting zero each time, so 10 degrees, 10 degrees each side of it, then you can move on to your actual cam timing. This is an RB25neo. It has an aftermarket kit to adjust the actual VBTI cam gear or VCT cam gear and it has an adjustable on this side. We haven't actually bothered to do this because uh, on this side because we believe it to be correct, um, but this has actually no marks. So for setting up on the VCT side is a bit more difficult. So especially, and you basically cannot do it when fitting aftermarket cams or even just changing this without doing this. So here we have a dial indicator. Now, what we're reading, when you look at a cam sheet, it will show, uh, I think we've got it here. So this is intake cam that we're talking about. So it will open at one millimeter lift at six degrees after top dead center. So what we'll do is measure with our dial indicator where one millimeter lift is, then we will check on our cam wheel, uh, or crank, um, crank wheel, what degrees it's at at the moment. So, if we watch our dial indicator, I'll spin it around, so we can see here our cam lobe coming around. Then we just tap this to keep it set, so we've got our dial indicator at zero. We wait for this to come back around, now we'll start seeing our dial indicator move, there we go. Once it's done one revolution, that will be one millimeter. But we have to keep tapping this because it will be slightly out and it doesn't take much of a turn to actually get it there. So, I'm getting very close. So that is around one millimeter valve lift right there. Here, we're at eight degrees on our timing wheel. You can see there, eight degrees. So we know that our intake is opening at eight degrees where it should be at six degrees. We would then adjust this so that it's um, just one, uh, two degrees, sorry, one degree at the cam further over so that we're at two degrees at our crank. I'm guessing this is probably getting quite confusing at this point. Now what we'll do is we'll watch this. So that was sitting between four and five on the large scale of the dial indicator. We'll spin it around. It's now at maximum lift. We'll get it back around. And then we wait for it to start going the opposite direction. It starts winding itself back. We just keep tapping this just to get us close. A little bit more. There. That is now at one millimeter the other direction. And we can see here 
Now this is showing that we're at 124 degrees. If we look here though, it will say 54 degrees for intake cam closing. Don't get confused. You have to go 180 degrees minus 124. That's 56. So we're again, two degrees out on our intake cam close. Adjust it, check it, check it again, and then probably check it again. But that is the basics of doing cam adjustment. Um, it's a lot easier to do with an actual wheel because you can have timing marks on the actual degree wheel to show you where you should be at. There isn't much information out there on how to do this properly. Um, another point is that you also have on here your intake lobe center. So what you can do is readjust the height of your dial indicator so that your dial indicator will indicate where maximum valve lift is and you want that maximum valve lift your lobe center to be at 120 degrees that's how you can check your work once you're done other than that do some more research on it watch this video more it's not an easy thing to get to wrap your head around especially just remembering that the crank has to spin twice to one cam revolution and um, working in 180 degree in increments and also remembering that it's it's just difficult to get your head around but once you get your head around it you'll get it and all i can say is just muck around with it make sure you're on top dead center where your um, the crank degree wheels set up and then just get familiar with it before you even start adjusting anything you just don't want to end up with your valves hitting your pistons so see how you go and I wish you good luck. <laughs> All right, that's today's Friday Drift Tip. I know it's a bit advanced for a lot of people, but um, it's good information for people to know because a lot of people don't understand how this works. So, um, and if you don't know, take your motor to a reputable engine builder or tuner and get them to do it for you. So, All right, we'll see you guys next Friday.